So last week we teased you a little bit by telling you we were going to show you some great annuals that do well in the heat. And this week we've got a great selection of them. And first off, appropriately enough for 4th of July weekend, we have what's known as firecracker vine. Now this is a great vine for the summer heat. We planted this this spring and it just sat there and didn't do anything and now it's absolutely covered this trellis from top to bottom. Now this is an annual vine that can grow six to eight feet tall and the really neat thing about this are the flowers. This is where it gets its name, the firecracker vine here. It actually has a flower that starts out with some white blossoms, then you have yellow to orange to red on the tips, so it really makes a nice show. Now also, in addition to the showy flowers, the leaves make a beautiful cover for this trellis. As you look here, we've got these tri-lobed, they almost look like a fleur-de-lis, the very nice dark green leaves, and this is providing some good shade for the plants that are on the other side. Now, this will grow great on a trellis, but it also is very showy if you plant this in a hanging basket. Now, if you look very closely at our trellis here, you'll notice that down here we have some leaves that have some variegation in them. Now, these are actually from a different plant altogether. These are a morning glory, and it's called tie-dye because of the different patterns on leaves and also the great patterns that it has on the flowers. Now, on this, we have the nice silvery variegation on the leaf and the flower is a beautiful dark purple, almost royal blue color with some lavender swirls in it. And it depends on if it's in the sun or slightly in the shade as to how much of a tie-dye effect it has. But that is a great plant for an arbor area. Now, another great plant for heat and summer are cosmos. And usually cosmos grow to be three to five feet tall. They're a very tall flower. Now this is pink blush, and this is a dwarf type of cosmos. Now cosmos love the sun. They can take heat and drought very well. Now one thing with cosmos is they actually self-seed quite well and can sometimes get to be a bit of a nuisance in the garden because all the small seedlings will come up the next year. But they are absolutely a great heat tolerant plant. Let's take a look around our studio barn and see some more great heat tolerant annuals. Well, another one of the great annuals for summer heat are pentas. And they come in some great hot colors for summer. And we've got this nice pink here, and then we've got also a deeper pink and they also come in reds and a light purple color. Now pentas are a wonderful flower. They do quite well in both heat and they are drought tolerant. They also have a beautiful dark green foliage and a very full flowering head. Now if you deadhead these they'll bloom for you all summer and basically you would come down the stem to here and take all of this off because your new blooms are going to be here and here. So we could just keep these deadheaded. Now another bonus about pentas is they are a wonderful butterfly flower. You will have scads of butterflies in your garden feasting at your pentas. Well over here in front of our barn we have a great combination especially for 4th of July. And this is the great red verbena and in the back we have helichrysum. Now this is a very beautiful color combination here and very appropriate for this time of year. Now the red verbena, this is a common garden verbena and it blooms very well. The problem with it is, is when it gets really, really hot, it may slow down blooming for you a bit. So if you give them more water, they'll bloom better. But as soon as the weather starts to cool down again in the fall, these will be blooming again for you great. Now. Back in the back, we've got the helichrysum, and this is actually in the composite family along with straw flower. And it's got this great gray foliage here. Now this is not grown for a bloom, but is actually grown for the foliage. You may have seen it called creeping dusty miller. That's because it does have a creeping habit to it. It likes to kind of trail. And here we've got it planted with our verbena. And if you want it to be a little bit more well-behaved, you can just take and trim off 
wherever it seems to be getting out of bounds, this will actually help it develop a bushier habit and it will fill in very well. Now when we first planted this this spring, this was a very spindly looking plant and it wasn't until the weather warmed up that it really started to fill in and give us a nice show. Now if you don't have a lot of space, you can actually use this in a pot and here we've got our helichrysum in a pot. Now this works quite well, but you'll notice it's nice and gray, but it would be even better if we had a combination like this in the same pot with it. So try experimenting with some combinations in the same pot if you don't have room to put them out in your garden. Well, there are some other annuals scattered around the studio gardens that do great for the heat. And these include Cleome or spider flower. Now it is a very tall plant. It can get three to five feet tall and it has a wonderful bloom on the top that will start to bloom around now and bloom clear through the frost. It has a spidery looking flower and thus the name and it really loves the heat. Now it will respond well to more water than some of the others that are very drought tolerant but it is a great plant for your summer garden. Another great plant is the Tithonia or Mexican sunflower. Now we've got this planted in our orange garden this year and right now it is a beacon in that garden. It has a wonderful bright orange flower and a very dark green leaf. Now this is again a tall plant and it is very heat and drought tolerant. So this is a good plant for an area that might not get so much water. Well another great performer that's fairly new on the market is the scavola or fan flower. We've got this planted in our formal carpet garden and now that the weather is warmed up, it's starting to fill in. It has a trailing habit and it has that wonderful blue fan-shaped flower on the top. Now this also comes in a pink and a white cultivar and also they have a smaller flower with a very small fan on it that's available just this year. And finally, if you need some quick cover for a hot dry spot, you might want to try purslane. Now purslane is closely related to rose moss and it has the same cultural requirements. The only difference is it has a flatter, rounder leaf. This particular cultivar, known as Tequila Sunrise, has a very showy flower. Well, I hope you've enjoyed these summer annuals and if you have a hot spot in your garden that needs filled in with some summer color, think about using one of these. We hope you've enjoyed this classic from the Oklahoma Gardening Vault. Remember, even though these tips and techniques are timeless, there's always something new to learn in the world of gardening. By subscribing to both Oklahoma Gardening and OK Gardening Classics, you'll have access to a wealth of gardening knowledge, both classic and contemporary.